Hey ladies, welcome back to my channel. So this is how I get major volume in my hair. I have Velcro curlers in them. That was a Velcro. And I just washed my hair. I put these up. I did do some on the bottom, but I didn't want to have it too much volume. So I took those out. I keep these up during my makeup application. And today I really want to do a really beautiful makeup application with including the biggest mistakes women make with their blush, their bronzer, and their lips. Are you ready? Let's get this beauty started. So I'm gonna just start off with my Ever Biomatic Peel Pad. I've been using these for years because they're very easy, it's simple, and I like the way that my skin looks. I like the texture being nice and smooth. I like the brightness. I like how it just is a very simple step in my routine, but I am exfoliating my skin. So that is something that I do love using. And also I'm going to exfoliate my eyelids today. I haven't done this in a little bit. This is the Contours RX B5 Eyelid Prep Pads. So if you're using the Contours RX Lids by Design, this is what you would wanna do prior to putting the lid strips, lid strips on. Cleanse, exfoliate, hydrate, nourish, brighten, protect. So this is something that we kind of forget about doing, right ladies? We don't exfoliate the eyelids. Whoever thought about exfoliating the eyelids? Well, now that we have this beautiful diamond uh, textured little uh, pad here, we go across the lids. This takes off any dead skin, that darkness that you start seeing in the inner eye here. It's really nice if you have oily eyes, eyelids, and you start seeing your makeup really creasing and it doesn't look nice. This is a great thing to do for your eyelids. So I go from the base of my lashes all the way up to my brows. Now that I have prepped my face, I'm gonna go into the Bobbi Brown Face Base. This is a, a vitamin enriched primer, but I use it more of, as a moisturizer. So I'm gonna just take a little bit out of this jar and I'm gonna put it on my face and then I'm gonna work it in and I like the hydration that it gives me. It's not greasy. You know, I'm really not into greasy products that sit and don't absorb. That's a problem. I've used this product for, I don't know, 10 years plus on my clients, on myself. It's a nice little staple to have in your makeup bag. And then once this is on, I will go over with my Spearsly Smooth Tinted. That's going to be a really nice smoothing, filling in, like blurring my skin before I go into my foundation. But you know that I do my eyes first. I do not do, it's a pro tip, ladies. I do my eyes first because I am not going to be wasting my time cleaning up and fixing and no. I'm gonna do my eyes first with my eye and lip primer. This is wonderful because I'm going to just neutralize out my eye. I don't have to worry about anything. I want my makeup application to be simple. I don't wanna to have to like go back and correct and oh wow, put eyeshadow on over my beautiful concealer and now I have to whisk it away and then I gotta put concealer on again and then I gotta powder it. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I am keeping it very simple, doing my eyes first, neutralizing my eyes with my eye primer. This is really beautiful because it will, it's, I don't wanna say dry down, but this sets where it's nice and smooth. It's not oily, shiny, greasy. This is going to keep your eyeshadow on all day. This is going to really, some of the ladies use this and they just do it like this, put on mascara and have like this neutral, beautiful eyelid. So you can do that also. It's just nice not to have red eyes, brown, uh, you know, purple, blue, all of those different uh, colors that are on our eyelids as we age. It's like nice to just neutralize them out. So we're gonna go in today with Not Overlooked. This is a wonderful spring palette I came out with, and I came out with it because I'm tired of women of age being overlooked, whether that's your job, whether that's with men, whether that's with just strangers. <laughs> Whether that is with anything, we're not overlooked. And guess what? That starts with you. That starts with your attitude. And so, of course, it's a powerful eyeshadow palette. Beautiful. And I love this blush robe with these colors because this is a pink cashmere, pink champagne color. So as I always say, cashmere and champagne always go so well together. That's what this is all about. You have a really, really beautiful palette. And it just goes on. It's like, it's kind of the... I just like to have a color palette that I know that I'm not gonna mess up with, that it's gonna look really beautiful and very simple. And I'm gonna just take it across my lid. So you can see right now, 
just how pretty, just how soft. If you want a soft palette, this is really a nice way to go because you have the like, beautiful sheen, so it's not matte. You're gonna have this beautiful sheen on your lid and you're going to be able to still feel I'm put together, I'm not over the top, I'm not adding too much. It's not blues, it's not purples, it's not you know, browns. If you want something that's just going to give you kind of like that pretty soft look, this is a great palette to go for. So I'm just doing the lid and I'm going kind of right into the bit, little bit of that crease there. Again, not worrying ladies, what's going on over here? I can always clean up, no problem. See, that's the whole key. I'm gonna go in with my little pencil brush. This is a contour brush. I'm gonna go into the darkest color. And you know what? I'm going to just give it a little structure on the end, just a little structure. Do you see that? Just adding in a little bit, right? Just piling it up here. Again, I don't care what happens here. It's not a big deal, nothing to stress about. Maybe bring it down a little bit underneath, right? I'll leave it there because I'm gonna blend it. Go back in from the, my other eye. Again, pile up on the end, okay? Piling up the product because I just want it to be soft. I don't need that much. You're gonna be blending into your eye. And if you have fine lines and wrinkles more here, don't worry because we're gonna lift that out so here we go, we have it on. I'm gonna just take a clean eyeshadow brush and I'm going to just work it in so it all blends nicely together. It's kind of like fused together. This is fused together. This is not like, oh, you see where I put the contour color, any of that. Just looks really, really pretty. Enough color, not too much, enough color. And then I'm gonna just sweep up the sides so you can see what that looks like. Going in with my Almay pad, this is the best thing. They are now biodegradable, so that is wonderful. Taking my little pad here, just wrapping it around my finger. So where I see that where it went a little bit lower, I just go from the bottom of my lid and I go just straight up. So I take off all of that extra eyeshadow that fell, right? And I bring it up because I have these fine lines, so I don't want the eyeshadow in there. We can see them. Yes, I do have them, yes. And also I have a little bit more of my, my skin right there coming down. Like I would never do a winged out liner that just wouldn't, we just don't wanna get involved in that. So I wanna lift my eyes just like this. Now listen, if you like winged out liner, there's nothing wrong with that. I just can't do that with my eyes and what's going on with my skin. It doesn't look good, it all folds together and it looks like what happened. And then you see like a little, you'll see a little, coming out and it's like, what happened? Did you mean to do that? That's not really a good look today, Nicole. So I don't do that. Gonna go right in with this nice matte, very soft, soft, soft pink as my highlight. And I'm gonna go just right underneath the brow bone. See, I can just marry it all together. Very light, very pretty. So I'm gonna go in with my eyelash curler and I'm going to just curl my lashes, get them up because my lashes like to go straight. You can't see them. Once I curl them, you can see them. And then I'm gonna go in with my eyeliner. Today I'm gonna to do something a little bit different. Since I'm feeling like this boudoir, very sexy, my hair is really high and up. It's giving me those vibes. I'm gonna go in with my brow coal liner. So what I'm gonna do is I just really want to, I wanna define, as you know I normally do, right here at the base of my lashes, right? So I'm gonna thicken that up so it looks like my lashes are thicker than they are. But I kind of feel like going for it. I really, you know what, I feel like going for it. I feel like making it a little bit more kind of smoky. I don't feel like playing by the rules today. Uh, I kind of feel like that's been the vibe recently for me that I want to push the envelope. <laughs> I want to stay true to myself. I want to do what I want to do and not feel like I have to conform to anything, anyone. And I do that with makeup. I do that with my Instagram photos, with bathing suits and blazers and really pushing the envelope and basically stepping outside the box because you know what? We have one life, YOLO. And I think that I take that YOLO and I just throw it into beauty and fashion, right? So I'm gonna just take my little smudge brush and I'm gonna just smudge this up. I want it to be a little bit more than I normally do. Why not, right? I mean, this is like pretty, it's blush pink, it's just, do you see that? Do you see how I lined it like I normally do? 
Then what I did was I take the smudge brush and I, I really fuse it out so it grows a little bit, looks really beautiful, but it's really the technique of what you're doing. Apply the coal pencil on your lash line, in those lashes like I teach you how to do, it's a signature application. Then you take a short smudge brush and you smoke it up. So it really looks like you've done some powerhouse application, but you really, you know, it's very simple. So you can see, do you see like it gives you that depth, that shadowing compared to this eye? Just very pretty, still appropriate, still age appropriate. You're just giving it a little bit more of that oomph. And then you put your mascara on and you're like, yes, this is me. This eye is done. We're gonna go on to the next eye and do the exact same thing. Let's just take a little bit of the coal pencil just at the end here, about three quarters in, and then we'll do the same thing. We'll smudge it a little bit so it has a nice softness to it. I, I am a big blender smudger. I do want this to be a little bit more of a look than just supernatural, so that's what I'm doing. Again, you can always clean up as you go if you see anything that's anywhere other than where you want it. Just take a little All May pad again, just right underneath. That's the beauty of not having concealer on right now, ladies. It's really wonderful. So now I'm gonna do some mascara. I'm gonna take black mascara. We have also brown if you feel that brown is a little bit better of a look for your lashes. I'm gonna just go to the base, pull up straight to the tips. I want the most of my concentration at the base of my lashes, separating them as I go and really getting as much of this fringe as I can. I, this is why I really like this wand and this mascara of mine because it has little teeth on it. So it's always taking out, you can see, it's really separating my lashes and it's giving me that gorgeous real fringe look. It's not clumping on there. I'm not putting on too much. So I can really separate them out. So in respect to my lashes, I do use a lash serum, Grande Lash. It, I've been using it for over five years here in the studio. We do sell it online. I saw it a big, big change with my lashes and then obviously with my clients and my clients that wanted to go off of lash extensions, this was the alternative for them. So it was really nice. So that is how I get my long lashes and also having a little bit more dense lashes. I really love it and I use it for my brows. So now that my, we're speaking of brows, I'm gonna just take a little brow fix. This is in cocoa, and I'm going to just, this is really nice when you have gray brows or if you just wanna kind of gloss your brows up and have them look kind of more groomed, give them a little bit more structure, a little bit more depth. I love this little wand because it's a little spiral and it really picks up the brow hair, but it doesn't deposit too much product, like it doesn't glop product on. So that's a real key there because you don't wanna have tons of product. You know, say you have blonde brows and you just wanna make them look a little bit more dense. You just want enough, enough product. You don't wanna to have too much product going on. So now the brows are done, you know my favorite part is lips and cheeks and bronzing up. Now we talked about bronzer in one of my last videos because I watched the Martha Stewart video for Allure magazine and Martha was really piling on the bronzer. I thought it looked nice on her. I don't know if it's really realistic for a lot of women to do that, but I'm gonna go through as we do the face and the foundation and everything, kind of call outs on what not to do, what not to, not to do with lip liner. So my face is prep moisturized. I'm gonna go in with my Fiercely Smooth. This is tinted, I show this on the skin like this because I want to show you how it comes out very dark, but it doesn't leave or deposit a lot of color. I like to just use this in the areas that I find mostly T-zone is where I like to smooth out, especially right into this lovely line creasing around my eyes. And it just really nicely fills in my, kind of like those just looking not not as smooth as I really remember them being like, my skin. And so I just do it in this beautiful, simple T-zone. So I'm gonna go in with Lighten Up. This is my concealer. I'm going to dab it from the inner corner here underneath, and I'm gonna just take it down a little bit. That is how I like to do it because I have talked about 
multiple times about this redness in this area, my biopsies, that I just feel that my skin has been traumatized and it's going to be like that. So I always bring it down. I think it looks more natural to not have just right underneath your eyes. I'm going to take my foundation buffing brush and I'm just going to work it into my eye area here, just nicely pushing it into the skin, almost like, you know, you're you're kind of buffing it. You'll see how it lifts the skin. It really looks beautiful. It's a lightweight concealer. So you don't have to worry about, oh no, I've just added so much. It looks like I have so much makeup on. No, you're not going to look like that because it's nice and it shows the skin through still, but it does lighten the, the eye area. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, I could do my BB cream, but I want, haven't used the Chanel, the um, Vida La Mir. I'm saying it definitely wrong, but I love this. Broad Spectrum SPF 15 Ultra Light Skin Perfecting Sunscreen Makeup. So I, I'm, I've had this since I, this is the same bottle I've showed you since like last fall. Yes, $50 and it's lasted me like six months maybe or so. Cause I, look, I only use this much. Not a lot, take it in, beautiful buff it into the skin, really see that skin come up. Oh, how did that happen? Well, we just keep moving on ladies. At least I'm here and I didn't lose it on the street. <laughs> my earring, it'll go back in. Oh my gosh, it's so crazy. It's never done that before. Anyway, keep moving forward in your foundation, buffing it into the skin. I really love the look when you finish buffing anything. BB cream, foundation, CC cream into the skin. It just looks so pretty. It really gives your skin, I, I mean, I've done this on all of my fierce aging ladies, Jean and Judy, and it just looks so beautiful. It doesn't look like you're putting foundation on heavy, heavy on the skin. You're not covering up your skin. You're not seeing foundation sitting on there. Obviously, if you pick the wrong formulation for your skin, you will, but when you buff it on, I just think it looks just so beautiful. And then I'll just take down on my neck. So everything is incorporated together. You do not want a demarcation line where you stop and then it's a different color, right? That's not going to be a good look. You don't want to stop and then have you or your foundation lighter, darker neck, and then you have it right here. You want to work it all in ladies and just really enjoy the fact that your skin looks so good and it looks just really radiant. So now we're going to talk about bronzers, blush, and let's talk about first bronzers and older skin. So I think that this is something that we all kind of shy away from like, Oh no, I don't bronzers are orange or they're too glittery or I look ridiculous or what have you. So let me just give you some tips when it comes to bronzer. So we have a dual blush bronzer, which is great. Also, you want to find a matte bronzer. Bronzers with a lot of sheen and shimmer on them. I also have it in my, I don't think I have it here. Um, I have a bronzer in the Classic Beach collection. It's a face palette, highlighter, blush, and bronzer. It's really nice because it's a matte bronzer also. It's one of my favorite palettes. It came out, it was one of my first palettes that I came out with. So that's really nice. You can go to the drugstore and pick up one. I picked this one up from Physicians Formula, and it was the most matte I could get. This is like a mosaic uh, blush that they have that, you know, you have lighter and darker, which I think is really nice. Lots of options for you, depending on, um, this is called multicolored custom bronzer, and this is in light bronzer. So I have to be careful because I'm very light. So you can get fluffy brushes like this because you kind of want it to be like the sun hitting you. You don't want to have like so much bronzer on. So I, I personally think this is hard for me to use, because of my gray hair. Like I can't bronze up the gray. So I don't use big fluffy brushes like this on my face. I can use it on my neck and my decollete. It seems that it will cover more area if you use brushes like this. Um, I got this e.l.f. one at the drugstore. So you can just swirl it around, go down on your neck and just make it look really nice and natural. But if you're using it on the face, what I like to do is I like to just use either a powder brush or you can use a blush brush and you can swirl together or you can just use, let's just use this, this kind of bronzer here, just swirl it around 
And I've taught you before about the backward C. So it's really like where the sun would actually hit your face and where you'd wanna bronze it up. So basically you would wanna just come up on the forehead, avoiding the hairline, come down around where you have your, the hollow, you wanna make some that makes that area more of chiseled out. So you wanna go down the, the hollow of the cheek area here, and then come around on the jawline. So you really want to have that jawline pronounced. So you can gauge on how much that you need to use. Um, I like to swirl. I like to look at the brush. Oh, I don't have that much. Hmm, let me get a little bit more. I find that this takes a little bit to kind of gather the product on my brush, but once I get it there, then I make sure not too much. Go up in the top. You're just trying to create having a little bit of that beautiful color, giving you a healthy glow. You can go down on the nose if you want to, but I really like this application because it just looks really beautiful, very natural. I actually like this bronzer, it's very pretty. It's nice because there's not just one dark color. It's a, it's a nice lights and a little bit of kind of a bisque color. Um, but you can see how beautiful, it just really looks nice. So that's something to consider when you're applying bronzer. You just want to have the right brushes depending on where you're applying it on your neck, your decollete, your shoulder area, on your face. Is this too big for you? Switch over to a smaller brush. Be able to do the backwards three. Now when it comes to blush, now you have to remember that you don't want to have, if you have receding hair or if you have thinning hair, you don't want to take your blush and go all the way back and have the color sitting and kind of becoming a focal point where you have thinner hair receding. So you don't wanna bring it all the way back here. You can go right on this beautiful cheekbone and stop. I like to show you about just using your blush brush and buffing it into the skin. I want it to really look like it's just coming from within you know, coming from within, right? So it's not like you have this big streak here and then you have piled back the makeup here. Just really work it into the skin so it's really nice and buffed. You don't have a big streak. That's another thing with the blush. Cream blush with the bronzer, you could take something like a nice apricot color. This is Palm Beach. You could take it a little bit and just do on the cheekbone here. So you have kind of that healthy, beautiful glow. Got the bronzer going on. You have a little bit of this beautiful apricot right on the cheekbone, working it in. You'll know your bone structure. You'll know where you like to place it, but you have it and it just really looks nice. Love cream blushes because they you can see the skin, skin through. It's very pretty, very natural, healthy. That's the look we want is a healthy, beautiful look. And you can always blend as much or as little as you want, it just depends on your application. But I love, love, love this look of bronzer and a cream blush. So moving on to the lips. So this was a very big trend back in the 90s of having a darker lip liner and then a lighter lip color. And it was very strange because I never really understood it. It didn't really look natural, but it was a very big trend and it lasted forever. So it was almost like, so say I took cognac, right? I'm gonna show you what it looked like. It's very strange, and I think you'll remember, I think it was probably mid in, probably mid 90s to late 90s, so they would line their lip. With a darker lip liner, nude was really the color, and they would take a, a lighter color, and they would go in Like this, I mean, this was the look, ladies. I'm not kidding you, this was the look. And this is not what you wanna do. You don't wanna have a liner that's darker and then a light lipstick. It's just not, it's just, it's aging, it doesn't look good. Um, and you want to have a lip liner that is the same color as your lips. So you want it to look natural. You want it to look really pretty. So match your lip color. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna to do today with this look that I have going on. I'm gonna just take Cameo, which is a really nice cool pencil, and I'm going to line my lips, and it's very much like my lip color. Another thing I do is I do fill in a little bit 
so I don't have just a line around my lips. I like to work it in. I want the definition, but I don't want it to look like it is just a lip line around my lip. I'm gonna take Nick Ray, which is one of, actually it's my top selling lipstick, and it's beautiful, high, high, high shine, moisturizing, and you have a really nice natural lip. So this is a very pretty kind of everyday kind of lip color. I really do love it because it is just not like a no brainer, right? I know it's gonna look good with everything. It's like my natural lip color and I just love the high gloss on it. So it looks really, really pretty. So there you have, you know, some, some options when it comes to bronzer. You don't have to be afraid of bronzer as we age. We can add this in, we can make it look healthy, beautiful. It's just picking out the right bronzer, not getting sparkles and glitter and shine. You really want to experiment and you can experiment with all different types. Drugstore, you can go for department store. You can really kind of see what what formula is gonna work for you, but staying away from the glitter and the shine is the key. And then really just knowing your lip liner, you know, that's a big mistake, too much lip liner. It, you want to define the lips with whether you have thin lips, whether you are losing the volume in your lips, you just want to line them so they look pretty, they look natural, they, they come off your face, but it's not like you're lining them and that's all you see. So that's a couple things that I wanted to call out, I think are really helpful. And I gotta tell you, Velcro curlers are very underrated. I don't know if anyone else is using Velcro curlers, but I gotta tell you, this gives so much great volume in your hair with little effort. I mean, really little effort. You put it in, have your coffee, and really get this beautiful, oh, I have another one back here. I had so many in my hair. So you have this, you know, you do your beautiful makeup, you have this great volume. Yes, I have thicker hair, but let me tell you, my hair can be flat, flat, flat. Doesn't matter that I have a lot of hair. It could be weighted down. If I use the wrong shampoo, what have you. I've had those days where it's like, why is my hair so flat? I do things like I, I last night for the last three days, I've been really pumping up that Kirastas um, uh, serum in my hair and I really see that it helps with my roots. This morning I used a, uh, I showed you that Saqqara, which is the food plan that I've been doing, um, I've invested in. It's all over my Instagram. I, they, they had special um, products that were sent with my, my meal plan and it was this really beautiful salt scrub for my hair. So I used it this morning. And so I was like, oh yeah, yes, yes. So this will last, I'll spray it up a little bit and I'll enjoy this look. I'll enjoy this not overlooked look and I'll just celebrate my age, celebrate feeling beautiful, doing the steps, doing the consistency of just all of this, it's wonderful. And ladies, until my next video, I'll see you later.